Hi, and welcome to Old Guys Gentlemen Flex Fountain Pens. And this will be episode or video number three. And it's going to be about the Jin Hao, Jin Hao um, 159. And my modification to it uh, with a Zebra G, Zebra Comic G nib. A little bit about this particular pen. It's uh, probably one of the most affordable pens out there. I got this on Amazon for uh, $4.10. And then I got a packet of uh, G nibs for, I think, seven bucks. Uh, Ten. And the reason uh, th these are actually uh, dip pens. Uh, but the line variation you get by modifying this particular pen is just kind of amazing. It takes a little bit of work, I think, to get it to the point where it's a really fun pen to write with. And there's several YouTube videos out there to tell you exactly how to do this, and I'll do a cursory review of it, but um, I won't actually do it where the other videos will show you how to do it. Okay, something about the pen. The total length cap is about 14.8 centimeters. The length capped is about 16. By the way, um, you have to use a little bit of force to uh, keep the cap on there. That's what I found anyhow with this one. The body length itself is 12.8 uh, um, centimeters. The thickness, this is uh, my thickest pen. The diameter varies at the thinnest or the smallest diameter to the largest about 12 to 13.5 millimeters and the max uh, diameter here is about 15.9. Um, at first I, I felt this was obscenely too big. I kind of like it. I don't know if I want all my pens to be like it but um, it's kind of fun to switch up the diameter. I definitely know I don't like the really thin pens like for instance this is a Waterman 12 and I really like this pen it's an eyedropper pen I think it's one of the older pens that I have and it writes really well but my fingers start to I don't know, get tired holding something that thin so the thickness didn't really bother me too much on this well let me tell you about uh, how I change it out you you make sure that the pen is clean this is inked right now and you uh, pull the nib out uh, usually by holding the sides and you can look on YouTube but you know I have a little rubber matting thing I use or in really hard cases I'll soak it if it has dried ink in it or I have a little wrench that I can uh, actually two wrenches where one I can hold here and pull it out here but if I remember quickly it wasn't all that bad pulling this thing out and what you get out is the um, the nib which you don't need anymore and then a feed what they'll talk about is to use these G nibs and place let me see if I get this in here. To pay, place that slot right there, even with the last cut in the feed. Uh, so I did that, and I was having some irregular flow. I'm also using a different ink, which I'll talk about in a second. So what I did is, uh, it's not ebonite that was in there. It's plastic. And for, as far as I can tell, if you want the ones that use the modern feeds that have the um, the breather tube I think that's what it is the small thing that sticks out of the um, the end of the feed then there really are no ebonite ones uh, but I had read somebody say that you could heat these up and then uh, form them by pressing them on there and I didn't know what I was doing turns out that uh, plastic when you get to a certain temperature just kind of turns really kind of gooish Upon further reading, they recommend just putting in a hot bath of water, and there's some elasticity, I guess, in the plastic, so it'll help form to the nib, which just helps the, um, uh, the flow that I was having. But what I did is I turned it to goo, <laughs> and, uh, and that's what that looks like. But luckily, you can buy these kinds of nibs, in fact, I'm collecting some between uh, what I have and um, uh, what I've been pulling out of some of the pens. 
uh, both ebonite and plastic nibs. So I bought another one that for all intents and purposes was the same as this and fitted a, uh, you know, fitted a nib to it. Said I wasn't going to go into the detail. And what you'll find is it doesn't quite, let's see if I can do that, it doesn't quite fit. And so there's some bending and smashing that goes on in the back up here, not up here. And, and you can make it work. So I ended up getting a new nib, put it in there, and I was still suffering from um, railroading on the thing. Actually, that wasn't the only problem. Uh, but let's talk about the railroading for a second. Uh, this, these tines split apart an amazing amount. I'll write, here, I'll write in a second, but um, you can kind of see... And that's because it's like a dip pen, okay? I mean, it's a dip pen nib is what it is. What I did, and I talked about this in another video, is uh, with a lot of experimentation, I found out on the really widespread uh, tying pens for big walling variation, I had made up a 25% solution of um, photo flow. Then I put various amounts, depending on how much ink you want to do. I got confident enough that I went ahead and because I have s several large modern flex pens, I end up taking a bottle of this and the what worked was about one uh, milliliter of this 25% solution in a full bottle of uh, Amarillo Hiroshizuku uh, Pilot ink. So that one is reserved for the, the pens that, that don't flow well. Uh, what I found out recently is that for these really widespread pens, it works great. On pens where there's just a little bit of um, flow interruption, a little bit of railroading, if I put that in there, it's too loose, too gushy. Um, so I probably need to sacrifice another bottle with um, maybe half the concentration. Okay, next thing is that uh, this stuff, these nibs right here, I don't know if you can hear it, but they're... They're very needle nose pointy, very scratchy. There's no iridium coating on these things. And so I had to polish that. Uh, so again, there's lots of videos on YouTube to tell you how to do this, but essentially it's having various, very high grit uh, micro mesh um, sandpapers and eventually working with some uh, mylar uh, that is uh, like one micron and a half a micron. I might have those numbers wrong. Might be um, smaller micron size than that. And I got to the point where it wasn't flinging because what will happen is if, if it's really pointy and you're, you're hitting paper, if it's not really good paper, it'll dig in the paper. You'll keep pushing because you don't know any better and fling. <laughs> nice little spring action. Launches ink in all sorts of directions. Now by... Uh, by polishing it, uh, I got a lot smoother writing ability with it, but I lost some of the um, sharpness. This was kind of like a, a double extra fine, maybe even triple extra fine. Uh, and now I'm probably on the order of like extra fine, but that's okay compared to the, the line variation that I get. So how does the thing write? Now I like, I like all my pens to be posted. You know, I like to have it just feels better in my hand. Uh, but let's see how... Can we get a little bit closer? So this is a real kind of a, a light hand. And going across. Now this is much thicker than when I, when I first got it, but that's still pretty thin. Okay, so now let's start putting a little pressure on it. I got a little bit of railroading there. Uh, but you got to expect that at some point. Uh, and it recovers pretty quickly, if I remember. So, uh, how about doing a little hello? <laughs> and I don't know why I'm so fascinated at having line variation, but. I'm beginning to like the bounce associated with um, writing with one of these because I like to do 
I'm trying to learn how to do a good Spencerian, where, for, for instance, um, you, know, you could do a, a C you know, without any shading like that, but um, you know, I kind of like to do you know, stuff like that. And this kind of pen allows for it. It's still a little scratchy. Some of the downsides of this are um, it is cheaply built, but it, it doesn't seem to matter. Um, I'm not, you know, I haven't really had any problems with it. Um, the existing nib is not that great, and the G nibs are great, but if you do a lot of them, you could have a light hand, good paper, wet ink. And by the way, this is Claire Fontaine paper, which is, I have like three papers that I really like, and this is one of them. I've told that these will, uh, will rust out, and maybe you can probably see a little bit of browning right there. There it is. And uh, that the tip will wear down. In fact, maybe that's another reason why I'm not as fun as I used to be. Um, but I've got nine more. <laughs> so if you want to do some of the fancier scripts, uh, like Spencerian or Copper Plate or what's the other one? Um, is it Engrossers? I need to learn all those. Then this pen will work for you. Now, as I said before, a, a dip pen will have a post like this and then an extension out here and the pen will be down like this. So it's really easy to have the, the right um, orientation to the paper and be pulling down parallel to these tines. Because like with any of these um, line variated, uh, I think I just made up a, a new word there, line variated. <laughs> Uh, you always have to um, orient it uh, straight down so when you want to have that shading. So, so I end up doing a lot of, um, you know, I'll, I'll turn it almost sideways to myself to do, for instance, like, um, like a K here. Sorry, I'm still shit at this. And then rotate it back. You know, I do much better than this when I'm not on camera. Sometimes if I do a little bit faster. Well, not really. But it's a, for, let's include the whole cost of 10 nibs and the pen. On a little bit of investment for um, uh, w wetting your ink, you know, for this is, uh, you know, uh, an $11 pen that can do this kind of line variation again and again and a nice, nice thin lines as well. So uh, I think it, overall it's pretty good if you're, if you're going in for line, good line variation. So I got, hope you got some value out of that. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. I am kind of a newbie with this, uh, but I'm I'm climbing up the uh, the learning scale uh, as quickly as I can. And um, I guess that's it. Till the next time. Thank you.